where the treats at. Is, is this the, the passing of the torch, right? Is this what this signifies? It, it comes down to that, that front office and what they feel is most important. The champ is here. We've touched down from a higher plane. Why you made it here? We always look forward to that week because it was always intense. You know that we ain't coming back. We got to. The man, the myth, the legend, Dante Hall. My my, my favorite player growing up was Dante Hall. I love you guys in the show, but Dante was my guy. Get to dashing because you're done on the war feet. This episode of Chief Concerns is brought to you by BetOnline.ag. We're back, baby, and better than ever. All eyes are on the gridiron as teams are back on for another season. As always, BetOnline is your number one spot for all the pro and college football action this season. With a new updated site and interface, even more odds, props, and contests, BetOnline continues to be the number one source for everything in football. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Pretty solid. Don't forget to use our promo code BLEAV believe to receive your bonus from football, basketball, and boxing right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet all your favorite sports. Bet online where the game starts. So welcome to another episode of Chief Concerns. We're with our host, uh, former cornerback Eric Warfield and former tight end Jason Dunn tonight. We got the pleasure of speaking with Mr. Tyler Thigpen, former Chiefs quarterback and also played for the Buffalo Bills as well. Tyler, how you doing, buddy? Good, man. I'm good. Thanks for having me on. I'm looking forward to tonight. Yeah, man. I, Enjoy watching you play, my man. Enjoyed it. I appreciate it, man. It was, it was, you know, it wasn't like two years in KC, but man, that was a that was, that was one place that I, I, you know, I tell people stories all the time about Arrowhead, man. It's just, there's, there's nothing like that place. I mean, it really is pretty special. And you guys obviously experienced it as well. So y'all know it firsthand. Um, but I just, I, to see the success they've had over the past couple of years, man, I mean, it's just, it makes watching football fun again for those guys. I agree. I, I, I tell you what, man, things, I, I remember you coming in, just wet behind the ears. Coastal Carolina, Coastal Carolina's finest. I'm like, man, what's Coastal Carolina? I remember you was telling me, I said, Coastal Carolina, where's that at? That's it. You, you described it to me. I was like, yeah, man. And, and so uh, I, I think we, we kind of checked you out even more to see what, man, you was you was a bad boy, man, in college. Shit, and you, um, you know, bad boy out there, the Chiefs too, man. I, I always loved your energy, you know, what you brought to the game. Um, you know, just, just your whole, your attitude, man, and, and your personality. And I think, you know, sometimes people don't really – get exactly who you are, you know, as a person and your personality. When you yeah, first yeah. got out there, man, you was just, you was kind of kicking it with everybody. That was a good thing. You was learning, yeah, yeah. but also too, you were fitting in with us, man. You, you came out to have dinner with us a few times. Yeah. Hang exactly. it out. Yeah. Absolutely. So I'm on the plaza, man. I, mean, I appreciate you. Yeah, obviously, Tony, you know, you guys taking me under my wing, man. I always appreciated that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So I, I, you had to have something about you, man, to, to, to be, uh, a welcome into the clubs. So you you had that about you anyway, you know. So good people, yeah. good personality, like I said. So appreciate. Uh, it's good seeing you, man. Good seeing yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. You too, man. As soon as Marcus said you got you were on, there, I was like, man, it's been a hot minute since I seen JD, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and I gotta say, uh, the Tyler, uh, you know, in my years, you know, uh, when I was in middle school uh, watching you play. Um, I remember go, going to school and, and the Chiefs weren't that good that, that year, but you were, you were extremely fun to watch, uh, the pistol offense, the spread offense. It was like this new thing to the NFL is something that, you know, people said that would never last the NFL, but you, you look now and everyone, everyone's running some form of spread and pistol, um, offenses. But I remember going to class and like people, and I'm in Northern, Northern Virginia, people weren't big chief fans, but people knew Tyler Thigpen was. It was like, man, you got yeah. the quarterback of the future over there. You, you, you got a badass quarterback. And I remember I, I used to come in all pumped up because I, I, you know, Tyler Thigpen was my quarterback and stuff. So, um, yeah, man, you, you, as a chief fan, I can say you're one of those quarterbacks for us as a lot of fans as that we should have, a lot of us say that we should have built around you. Um, and yeah. you know, with P.O. Lee and Haley came in, they kind of changed up everything, but um, that year, the 11 games you started, you were the leading rusher of quarterbacks, and I believe you had more uh, uh, touchdown passes than Roethlisberger and Matt Ryan that season. Yeah, and, and I think Joe Flacco too, I believe. <laughs> I mean, so, so those are two, you know, three solid quarterbacks that have uh, had great careers. Yeah. Oh yeah. 
So it, it's 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 an absolute honor to have you on. And uh, we kind of talked about this earlier. Um, if you if you if I were to tell you that in 07 when you first uh, joined the Chiefs, uh, that in 2021 the Chiefs would be the powerhouse in the NFL, and Coastal Carolina would be number 15th in the nation. What would you what would you say to me? Yeah, I'm told you were crazy as can be. <laughs> but you know, one of those things that you know, obviously now that you know Casey's doing well, Coastal's doing well, you know, it's fun to to take a step back and say, hey, I was part of those programs at one point. And uh, you just love seeing programs that, you know, that have a lot of success. Uh, you love seeing them do well. And, uh, you know, Kansas City, obviously, back, you know, back to back Super Bowls, winning one of them, thought they were going to win again last year. Um, and then Coastal just, you know, pretty much undefeated last year into the bowl game. And now they're, you know, top 15 from a program, I think three years ago, three or four years ago is when they went division one. Yeah. And at the time, I even said, I said, what are they doing? I said, they're not big enough for that. And here <laughs> I am, you know, looking back at it now saying, good God, I was wrong in saying that. But I'm happy to see them doing well. And that coach. So you think they're the real deal this year? You know, I don't think they're going to compete. I even said that. I said, when they first came to Division One, I, I said, you're thinking that you go to Division One, the teams you're competing against are your Alabamas and, you know, your Clemson. I think they'd honestly, I think they give Clemson a run for their money the way that Clemson's playing right now. I think they're struggling. Um, but I don't think they could compete with your Alabamas, your Ohio State, the teams that year in and year out, they're in that top 10 every single year. I think they possibly deserve a chance at one of those, you know, teams, not necessarily in Alabama, because I think they'd have a piece of humble pie right there. But um, I definitely know that uh, if they stay up there, continue year in and year out, they may get an invite to one of these bigger conferences for sure. That's what's up. That, that's, man, I, I'm, I'm... – and the reason I know that y'all just made it like three years ago in the D1 because y'all beat us out. It was Coastal Carolina, Eastern Kentucky, and a couple okay. other teams that was thinking about going D1, and y'all oh, end up wow. uh, winning out because of y'all campus and location. Yeah, exactly. So y'all y'all had the aesthetics and stuff, man. But I, that's what, everybody was telling me, like, Coastal Carolina's ranked in the top 25. I'm like, are you sure? He's like, no, seriously. I'm like, come on. No, yeah, ain't no yeah. way. I, mean, they creeped, <laughs> I think they creep. Did they creep in it last year, I believe, maybe? Did they? I want to say they did it towards the end of the year just because they, I mean, obviously they weren't playing the same level of competition as everybody, but I mean, they were 12 and 0 at that point. You got to creep them in there at something like 23, I believe, is what they creeped in at. But, um, but Man, yeah, that's, I mean, gotta be, that's gotta be a record in itself, though. I mean, just oh, coming absolutely. in within three years, you know, in top 25. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, certainly. And they're trying to play. I mean, I think they just signed a three year deal with Virginia. Um, they're starting to try and play some bigger schools. So I tell you what. You know, as much as I, you know, like Carol, South Carolina, they probably don't want anything at Coastal right now. They're they're not signing any three year deals with them. That's for sure. So what's your asset out there? Is it you got a good coach? You got a good uh, quarterback? What, what's what's uh? You know the quarterback is the quarterback. The coach is you know I think he's a great coach. Um, he finally got the reins turned over to him. You know they kind of had that transition from that uh, CEO they had of Ameritrade that was the coach there for a while. Uh -huh. um, they gave pretty much. Uh, Coach Chadwell, the reins about two years ago. So the first year they struggled. Um, and then last year, he pretty much got it together. I mean, they're just flying around on defense. Their quarterback takes care of the ball. Um, but they've got a really good scheme. It's almost like a uh, run pass option pretty much every play for the quarterback. And he's doing a great mm -hmm. job. He was a true – I think he was a redshirt freshman last year. Um, and he's done – I think he won uh, some quarterback award last year. I can't remember exactly off the top of my head, but – Right now, I know um, he's doing exactly the thing. I think he's had one turnover on the year. And, you know, you wow. just watch them. They just high energy, um, and they just fly around to the ball on defense. I mean, that's, you know, at the end of the day, I think they had a DN last year that got drafted to, uh, I believe, the Eagles maybe or Ravens or something. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, but they're just – I mean, that you can just tell that they got it. As soon as they're making a play, I mean, you know, every single person on defense is coming around. They're gathering around. You can just see there's a lot of high energy around there. Yeah, that, that that and you know once you have that high energy, man, it's infectious. You know what I mean? I mean, it goes through the entire team, and everybody just absolutely jumps on it. You know, absolutely. So, man, you know, you have success like that. I mean, how can you not be excited? But, Certainly, and they are beating teams. You know, barely beating teams. I mean, they're beating them fifty to ten, and I mean, they're just they're blowing wow. teams out. So, yeah, they, they well, I hope they prove you wrong. I hope they. I hope they're able to go out and beat a. Uh, a power five team and, and yeah, to, I would love to, get, to, to, to get to play off. I would love to see that, to give them that chance. I mean, right now I think it's still on four games on the playoffs. I'd love to see, you know, whether it be a coastal, obviously, you know, you know, me having ties to coastal going there, 
that I, there's always that one team that you just want to see that one year get a chance to play one of these playoff teams, mm-hmm. you know, whether it be a eight team or a, you know, a 10. And obviously it's a lot of more times than not that team that's, you know, ranked eight that's never going to get a chance because they're still 13 and 0, but they just haven't played enough teams to, to get into that, uh, into the playoffs. But it's like one of those things where, when those teams, more times than not, when they do play a team that's one of the top four, they end up getting blown out. But there is that time that you're like, hey, you know, maybe it's going to be the other way around. Right. You know, I, I agree with that, and I wish they could expand it. Um, and, and for whatever reason, they don't. Because uh, I'm a fan of NCAA football, not football, but, you know, March Madness. Yeah, absolutely. Now, March Madness, you can go and win your 20-plus games no matter what school you're at. You know, they're going to th- they throw you into the, in, into the, into the pool. Absolutely. And, but with football, is different. And I understand, like, that program is bigger. They got better athletes. They're supposed to be – they're supposed to dominate the smaller conferences. But Sir. yet again, you do it for basketball, and it doesn't happen that way. You always get that little Cinderella team that might pop yeah. up in the Final Four or might might end up in the championship. So, yeah, you never know until you give kids a chance. Absolutely. And, like, Coastal Baseball in 2016, they won the national championship, and they were one double A. So, I mean – you know, they were just happy. You know, in my mind, I was happy to see them get to the World Series because they had never been. But yeah. to actually get to the World Series and win the dang thing, I mean, that was pretty solid. I mean, they beat LSU at LSU that year. Um, and thinking the Super Regionals, I mean, that was pretty awesome to watch that. Yeah. And you play, you play baseball down there in Coastal Carolina too, right? No, I didn't play baseball. I went there yeah. thinking that I was possibly going to play, but yeah, yeah. I ended up just playing football. Okay, okay. And between, uh, chasing, between chasing women and playing football, I didn't really have much time. <laughs> and, you, and you say you got two kids? Two kids, two little girls. Oh, okay, so Good. if, if you had a boy. That I know of. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you had a boy, would you let him follow your footsteps? I would. I think I would. Uh, I don't necessarily think all this contact early on is, is beneficial in any way. I mean, I, I definitely – I would. You know, at the end of the day, I really want him to play what he'd want to play. You know, I'd be yeah. hard pressed to say that, hey, I don't want to see him play football or, or baseball, what I did growing up. But, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, I, I'd love him regardless, but I definitely would want to see him, you know, to try and follow those footsteps if that's truly what he wanted. Right. Yeah. Especially the, the way, it, you know, everything is going right now with the rules. I think doing a much better job of, you know, protecting players, quarterbacks, and everybody on the field. And Absolutely. so, uh, you know, when you alleviate, you know, all of those things, it, it, it's, it's going to help out the game, no doubt about it. Uh, but, uh, you know, like like the two girls, what, what are your girls in there? How old are they, if you don't mind me asking? They're five and four. Oh, well, shoot, yeah. They, yeah. Brand new. yeah. So I'm, still, I'm still in the trenches right now. That's why I, I see uh, yeah. I play much golf. <laughs> uh, they're going to be golfers. Yeah, exactly. Well, exactly. But um, they're, they're into, right now, dance, gymnastics. They played T-ball this uh, past fall, or excuse me, this past spring. Okay. Uh, they're playing soccer. We're trying to right now at this age to get them into everything. Yes, exactly. Just to expose them to all of it. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, maybe in a year or two that then they'll be able to say, Hey, I really like this or I like this. Um, so we're just trying to expose them to everything at this point. First concern of the night, obviously um, the chiefs bounced back this weekend against the uh, Philadelphia Eagles in the JD bowl, Jason Dunville or Andy Reid bowl. Um, mm-hmm. It was an offensive explosion. Uh, CH back-to-back 100-yard games. I know that was a lot of people's concern. I think people have gotten over that a little bit. Uh, but what were your biggest takeaways from the uh, 42-30 to 30 win in Philadelphia? Tyler, I'll give you the floor, my man. You know, just uh, – I mean, just seeing that offense back on, you know, one thing that uh, you noticed that they had a couple stops there on defense, uh, that was huge for um, them. You know, kind of like a, maybe a red or like you had said or something about that bend, don't break mentality – that, you know, they were giving up those drives, but then, it, you know, they really – that's that's the uh, – to me, the, uh, the chance for a defense to really um, define their season in a sense. Like, hey, you know, we, we're going to give up yards because we're playing against great athletes. But at the end of the day, if we're giving up field goals and rather than touchdowns, we got to say that our offense, which we know Kansas City's offense is very high-powered, is going to score more points than the opposing team. So, you know, at the end of the day, you know, it was nice to see those guys get back out there and, and put the uh, high scoring points back on the board like they are capable of week in and week out. So, so Patrick made a comment during one of the press conferences, and it was more so uh, about having, you know, a slice of humble pie. You know, but he thought that the offense at times, I, I'm 
assuming he's speaking mainly of himself, that uh, he, you know, overconfident, you know, because of the success they've had in the, the, the previous years with the offense, that if they're down 10, they're, they know they can get back to win this game. If they're down 15, they know, that they, know they can get back and win the game. And so the last two losses, they needed that to help them understand, uh, you know, any given Sunday, anybody could, you know, come and, you know, take your place as the best team. Uh, and, right, you know, just like what we're doing, they've already put Justin Herbert and, and, the, and the Chargers up ahead of us uh, for the success that they've got. And so and to look at it as it is, yes, the Chargers are a better team than us because they have come to our house and beat us. They have a better record than us. But in reality, I don't think that they're, they're better than us overall. I think we have a weight, a, a high power a better high-powered offense than they have. I think we have a better quarterback uh, and with more weapons as far as Kelsey, Hill, and uh, CEH. So I was happy to see that the offense was back to the offense. You know, if we get the ball, we're going to score. You know, there's no taking the foot off the gas. We're just trying to punch it in and show you who we are. And, and I love that. Now, the biggest concern for me, was just the defense. You know, you give up 300, almost 400 yards to um, – God, I can't think of the little quarterback's name. Hurts. Hurts, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, that ain't good because he's not a premier quarterback. Yeah. And so you go on out there giving up four, uh, 380 some yards to somebody that's not uh, known for being a passer. Um, and so it just – to me, our, our defense is – you know, we, we try to change something up. And I saw that we were moving Chris Jones from left to right putting him back at tackle. We had him all across the line, but with all that changing, we still had no success. Um, you know, the, the concern right now is the defense. And yes, it's good that at times we were able to give up a field goal instead of the touchdown, but, you know, just be, not being able to just stop someone uh, on, on drives when we needed to stop them is uh, it's still got to be a concern. You know, and I know that, you know, Stefan Gilmore, was on the block today and we let we, we lost that, but I don't think we had the funds to afford somebody like him either way. Um, you know, and I know somebody I mentioned Jalen Smith from the Cowboys who was released. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of him, and I'm pretty sure that Gay will be coming back soon, probably here in a week or two. Uh, you know, plus we'll be adding Corden. I don't know, he doesn't play defense, but that's that's <laughs> add add more ammo to the offense. So, yeah, we'll <laughs> so talk about that helps, yeah. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, man, I, I just, uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I knew Philly was just it's going to be one of those places. Uh, it's just, you know, you got the, the fan is going to be in there, man. It's going to they're going to boo you. They're going to do everything possible to try to get everything running their way. And so you go in and, and play in a hostile environment. It was good for them to just get back on track. And so, you know, my biggest takeaway, what I was just seeing is, like you said, uh, CH having another 100 yard game. And so, man, they're doing a fabulous job just blocking the front. They really are. Um, and still, I. Uh, you know, some of the uh, the pass protection still needs to be desired a little bit more. It is, you know, still having some issues there with the pass protection. Um, but uh, just all in all, man, I think they just played a, a wonderful game. And I, he, what you were just saying that he was talking about just having humble pie. Sometimes it takes that reflection, right? When you do something wrong, just kind of going back to drawing board, like, listen, look, guys, look, hey, we, we know who we are, Right. We don't have to come in each game and, and, and be fearful about, you know, fumbling and doing all these different things. Look, we played with the same amount of guys, the same nucleus of guys for a long time. The new guys that's come here to add on what we've been doing, hey, has been tremendous. Let's just take it one game at a time, right? And just bring them in, win that game. As long as we do that, take that approach, we're going to be fine. And so we know defensively, man, it's, it's, been, it's been absolutely tough. Announcer said this. I had no idea. I don't know if y'all heard this or not, but he said, "Man, the Chiefs hadn't won a game by more than six points since Week Eight from last year." That's. I was like, I had to rewind. I'm like, wait a minute, hold on. I know it, it can't be right. It cannot be right. Six points since Week Eight from last year. Man, that's that is mind blowing to me. Just to even think, you know, that all, I mean, literally, it's two field goals. It's not even touchdown. I mean, we're talking about something that significant. It's just saying that where the struggles and some of the pains on the other side of the ball are just taking place. And I'm just seeing it the same thing, man. And like I said before, I don't, I don't like calling guys out. But, man, I just, man, I'm seeing it's the same thing. The first touchdown they had, 
guys miscommunication was just out of place and it's still like trying to get everybody lined up i don't, I don't know what that is uh still got to get some more from the from the outside rush uh and and like you said it was moving chris jones around man but it just seemed like like guys were tired on the on the front line it just seemed like they were tired and we know everything starts up front yeah because you got long ass drives that is going down the fields <laughs> No, I'm, no, I'm saying, I'm saying, E, I'm, I'm talking about this is like the first quarter. We we didn't stop like they they took like two drives just running straight through our defense, and it was just the same thing. What they did just stress the defense out, you know, pretty much kind of like, uh, you know, horizontally, just like the field, just stress the defense out, and it wasn't like we were just you know uh, condensing lanes. Guys were just missing tackles. I mean, I would just say it was like like glaringly obvious like things that dudes was doing, just missing. And so I don't know what has to happen on that side of the ball. I know you said uh, the, the dude from New England, you know, but it, it's we, – we need – there needs to be some type of whew, reckoning in that room, at least getting guys together. And I, I don't know if we knocked on enough doors. So if Deach didn't want to give up six-round pick to get a uh, little buddy from uh, uh, New England – Hey, oh, he's going. He's going to Carolina. He's signed with the Panthers. Right. So I, I'm just saying. Um, I don't know, man. It, it's got. It's got to be a change. But we we need some pass rush. <laughs> we need some pressure. Uh, but it, it's it, we got to do a much better job, man. Seriously. Now, e, you made a comment uh, during the uh, during the game we were texting. You said the, the defense just it's just a, it's just slow. And I mean, just kind of talk about how because a lot of people are like you, you made today. You made a comment today, and we were texting that. You don't think we need to bring in Jalen Smith? You like you like Neiman over Jalen Smith? Why why do you like Neiman over Jalen Smith? So I live here in Dallas. I I, I watched a lot of the Cowboys games, and uh, you know when they had Malik Collins here, you know a, uh, he played D tackle. He's that played at uh, Nebraska. I got to know him really well, and so just having him here and seeing him play and having and seeing Jalen behind him, Jalen misses a lot of plays. I'm, like is significant. And so a buddy of mine that I play golf with frequently, uh, biggest Cowboys fans I've ever, ever seen. And uh, he's got front row seats to, you know, season, season tickets. And he sold on Jalen. And so I had to explain to him, like, have you ever watched Jalen play, play after play? Not just his highlight plays. Watch him play after play. He's nowhere near the play until it's yards down the field. And I don't want to sit here and make it sound like he's a bad player. He's just not that impact player as you know that a first rounder is supposed to be. And I don't think he would be that you know player that we're we're needing. Uh, he has the speed, but his speed doesn't come to play in game time. Um, I like what Bolton brings more so than what Jalen is. Uh, and so with the the potential of what Bolton is for the team that we have now. I'd rather keep what we have than, than bringing him and trying to replace, uh, you know, for, uh, over Neiman. Because for one, Gay is going to be back soon. We don't know if it's going to be next week or this week or the weeks down the road. Uh, is he the, the the savior or the fixture that we need for the defense? I don't know because I haven't seen him in full play with the rest of the, the defense. So, uh, but yeah, he, he is athletic. He is fast. But is he the savior that we need for this defense? I don't know that. I just know that I've watched enough of Jalen Smith to where I wouldn't be happy with adding him to that defense. Gay, Gay will help tremendously. I mean, with that, with the linebacker core, without a doubt. And, and it looks like that's part of that, I won't say, uh, you know, the IQ of it, but that mixed direction. When you have a guy who has the speed to make play, you know, sideline to sideline, who can read and, you know, a dissect the play when it's coming out, you know, Tom Matthew relies on guys like that, right? Who's already been in that fire to understand it, that, that knows what the, you know part of that communication is. And sometimes I don't see it from the other linebackers. Bolton, you know, he's a young guy, but he's making plays. You know, he's he's got that quickness. You know, from from where he's he's lining up, he's doing a, a great job. I see him miss a tackle in the open field, but I was I was kind of like, whoa, wait a minute. But it, it won't happen that often. But Gay, man, he he's just going to bring another level that will help his defense out. And maybe he, he might be, he might be that piece that they just need, you know, seriously. I mean, you, you got your, that's, that's your big boy in the middle. So that's what you need. We'll see. Yeah. 
And, and that's something, the, the athleticism from the linebackers. Remember, we had uh, Jared Page on a few weeks ago. He said and he's still learning, you know, how, how, to, how to read as a, as a linebacker. But what helps him is the fact that he is so athletic that he can make up on having misreads. And just having yeah. athleticism is going to be key um, going forward. Uh, but, Tyler, you mentioned – it's going to our, our next concern, uh, talking about um, Ben, but don't break. Uh, with the red zone stops that we um, – because – the first few weeks we didn't get any red zone stops between Baltimore, Cleveland, they were 100 in the red zone, and I believe the Chargers were as well. Um, I believe they were. I, I don't know the exact number on that, but when you have a high-powered offense like um, the Chiefs do, how important is it, like you know, to see on the, on the other end as a quarterback, you're seeing that your defense, you know, you know, the first few weeks they're giving up touchdowns, but you're, you're seeing them come off the field at, at least a field goal. I mean, is that kind of like something that's like, okay, it's a kind of a relief for a, a quarterback and the high-powered offense that the Chiefs do have? Yeah, it definitely is. I mean, anytime that, you know, when, when we played in 07 um, and 08, when I, you know, mainly started in 08, it was like we'd go down, score a touchdown, and then defense would go out there and just let them go down the field and, and score a touchdown. You know, like at that point, you're like, all right, now we know as an offense, we just got to outscore them. We know the defense can't stop them. And, mm-hmm. and that – it's not – it's not uh, heartbreak. It's just one of those things to where you kind of almost put the pressure on yourself as an offense to say, you know, we've got to score every single play because we know the defense can't stop. And a lot of times you end up putting more pressure on yourself than you actually need to. Um, But, you know, seeing that um, this past weekend, seeing them get those stops and and making teams kick field goals. I mean, that's the one thing that Philly's talking about this week is we've got to score touchdowns when we're in the red zone. And at the end of the day, that was really the difference in them winning the game versus, you know, making it more or less coming down to, uh, you know, to the wire there at the end and actually having a cushion that Kansas City had. So, you know, as far as when it comes to, you know, for an offense, when your defense is able to go out there and make plays and get stops and get the balls back, I mean, that's, you know, that's momentum swings right there. Whether you've got a high-powered offense or not, um, you know, at the end of the day, if you've got the defense that's flying out there or flying around out there getting turnovers and stops, making three and outs more often than not, you know, that helps out an offense. That takes a little bit of pressure off. And, and that really, you know, for the past couple of years, not only, uh, you know, Kansas City, everybody expects, you know, Patrick Mahomes and the guys that he has around him, they expect them to go out there and put 40 points a game up. And then when they're not able to do that, then you're like, what's going on? Mm-hmm. So for them to like, you know, you touched on that Patrick had mentioned about a piece of humble pie. Maybe it took something, you know, those two games uh, of losing and whatnot to actually say, hey, you know, we still know what we have. But at the end of the day, maybe we need that to a reality check. To say, hey, this is week to week. And a lot of times you have guys that, you know, you go to two Super Bowls back to back years. You have guys in week, you know, especially announcers that are talking about, you know, they're looking at the Super Bowl, but yeah. I'm telling you, any give, there's a reason they say any given Sunday, uh, you know, there's teams that when the Detroit Lions were 0 and uh, 15, yeah. <laughs> you know, back in 2008, I believe it was, I promise you who they were playing in week 16 or the 16th game of the season, they were bringing their A game to it because yeah. <clears throat> you know, as well as I know, any week, you're not only playing for your team, you're playing for 31 other teams because I promise you, if they cut you tomorrow, guess what? You're on the name, you know, every every team, all 31 other teams are looking to say, hey, what was he doing at that point? And so, you know, the guys that regardless of whether you're, you know, uh, week in, or just like week in and week out, you got to put your best on the field for those guys. And, 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 you know, just when it comes down to it, you want to see guys do well. And, you know, you just hope that they'll continue to do well and the defense will continue to get better because – they're going to get better. I mean, they've got to, bar, barring yeah. those, you know, major injuries or anything like that. The more you play with play with one another, the better you're going to get and the better communication is going to be. That's true. I'll I tell you what, I'm, I'm going to give you kind of the insight, it's the, just a little bit here. Uh, when Hearn first got to Kansas City, I remember he came and he talked to the offense. And the first thing he says, y'all scored too many points. We all just kind of sat back. You know, me and Tony sitting beside each other, we just kind of looked at each other like, what? Like, what do, you, what do you mean? Like, what are you talking about? So that's what we were just, we just thinking about scoring points. That was it. And we, we knew we had everybody's back, the, the defense, whatever. But he, you know, his point was, he said, whoever's going to win the game is who, who's going to have the ball at the end of the game, right? That's what he was thinking. That's what I was playing for. And to us, it was, it was really strange to even think that way, you know, because we were just used to scoring, you know, points. So it was like, wait a minute, hold on. 
But I think his philosophy was this. We score so many points, we score so fast that the defense is out there longer, right? And what we're doing is just wearing the defense down by scoring points. And I was just like, okay, I, I kind of – I see that. I get it. But the name of our, our game on the offensive side of the ball is to score points. Now, if the defense are able to take it away, or if they're not and they're tired, they have another side that could help them out, right? This is a team game. We understand it, right? They get paid nah, like we get they, paid. I can't. I, I disagree with that 100%, man, because I was a part of those so, teams. I was yeah, a part okay. of those teams to play with y'all, and I know we we did not compliment the offense. And so it was a matter of, you know, we, we're we not good defensively. That's all it is. And so no, we got to find say. a way. I get it, though. We just got to right. find a way deep down, deep down in order to make a stop, you know, make it a field goal or something to keep ourselves in. We know our offense is good. We know our right. offense is poor. But we as a defense got to do something. <clears throat> I, I'm, I'm just saying this to you, E. Even with that statement, during all that time, on the offensive side of the ball, I can speak for myself in the guys' room, we never lost confidence in you all. We never did, right? Because we understand what we had. We, we knew, it, it, you know, what your ability was. We knew what everybody that we, we, we uh, practiced against. And so y'all had to go against the offense every si- single day of practice, right? And so some of the, seeing some of those things, look, look, Barber, Mass, all of y'all guys, man, look, we at not one point did we think, you know, we was down on y'all. We didn't think like, that's, oh, that, that's, that's, that's about that's that's what being a team is about. And I, I get that one hundred percent. My point, right? But that, you got to understand on the other side, though. Us thinking is like, we don't think that y'all think that we're you know crappy. We feel that ourselves because we're out there at times, and so it, it. And even when a player is struggling, and you see that from the other side, I can't sit there and say, "Oh man, we need to take him out. We need to replace him." Mm-hmm. You know, it's just that at a, as a defense. Greg, whoever our defense coordinator, we need you to call us something to put us in position to make a stop, to, to, to take advantage of what strengths that we have and to cover up what weaknesses that we have. And we didn't have that defensive coordinator that could put us in those kind of positions. You know, just like when Maz came on here and, uh, and, 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 you know, DJ, you know, there's a lot of times where our defense was shifting towards me for whatever freaking reason. And, and it probably shouldn't have been, but that wasn't a regular defense. And so Greg was just trying to find a way to bail himself out instead of finding a way to bail the defense out. You got to make calls to to help your players uh, to make stops. And at times it was just, you know, we knew we weren't the best defense. We knew we weren't even a, 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 a you know, a, a well-mentioned defense. Uh, but we knew we were, were, were professionals and we had a job to do. And, yes, there were times we struggled with that job. But, yeah, we never thought at one point that, you know, the offense think that we suck. You know, that might have been what the fans are saying or, you know, the, the media. But we never thought one, at one point that our team was down upon us. You know, just like I said, I never thought that my my teammates sucked. So I, I would never sit there and call out one of my teammates because we didn't make a stop on defense. Right, right. Let me, so let me ask you this straight, straight off then because we haven't really talked about it. How much of this is on Spag's shoulder? What, do you think it's part his issue? A lot of it is because I know that there's so many defenses out there that you can actually cover up. And we use, I think that to our, uh, one of the excuses come back to bite us in the ass is that for the, the awareness and play of Tyron Matthew, mm-hmm. I, I think that we, at times it, it helps us. A lot of times it backfires on us. He's not a cover guy. Right, right. Yeah. He's a safety that can roam the back end and make plays like none other. Mm-hmm. He's not a cover guy, and we use him in coverage too much. You know, Chris is not that rush in guy that we, he doesn't have that speed, but we can put him out there to kind of loosen his position up to where he's not getting doubled and he can get some rest at running the DN and going to tackle. And yeah, so those are our two best. Stick. Those are our two best players, and I just think that at, we we got to find a way to use them the best that we can, but also make things easier for the other guys because we don't have the best coverage skills in the secondary. We don't have the best speed in our front seven. You know, the funny part about that is, you know, you saying that and I watch and they, they doubling Chris on the outside too. And so what, what the, the telltale sign is that is saying that we can block these guys, defensive tackles, single. One-on-one, everybody else. That's that. Yeah. But so That's another wild. scary thing right now, the scariest thing for me is I think that every team that we played so far, 
they've gone for it on a fourth down on us. Yeah, that's that's ooh. just you know that's 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 the spit disrespectful. Face. Yeah, that, yeah, absolutely. Every team has gone for fourth down. Mm-hmm. And I made a comment on a Sunday um, during the game. I was like, the no punt game reminds me of something, but. It's like we're going up against yeah. – I'm not knocking Jalen Hurts, but we're going up against Jalen Hurts. Yeah. Against you were talking Hurts. about me. <laughs> no, but I was trying to make the contrast here where you guys were going up against Peyton Manning, you know, Hall of Famer in his prime. Yeah, yeah, the no-punt game, right, for the, the playoffs, yeah. We're going up against Jalen Hurts right now. It's You know, it's funny to think with no-punt game, you think of that game, but, you know, Jalen Hurts, Peyton Manning, and Marvin Harrison in their prime. Uh, I mean – Yeah. He's <laughs> not <laughs> I, I didn't mean. I didn't mean it to be against you. I, I didn't mean it to be that way. <laughs> I don't know who was covering uh, Marvin Harris at the time, but that guy. <laughs> oh my! But so I guess that that's kind of like uh, lead me to Eric. Eric, you're saying that you knew you guys weren't a good defense. So were there like any times during the season where, like, let's say, you know, on a rare occasion, you know, you know, we went we went three and out. Our offense went three and out. You're like, oh shit, here we go again. We're, we're, we're not here we go again, but here we go. We're gonna have to make a stop. Like we're actually gonna have to do something. The offense didn't score or punted. Was with every games like like you guys be kind of like man, I was excited every single time that we had to go onto the field. I don't care who we played against. You know, I love playing the game of football. I enjoy I didn't give a damn if it was Randy Moss, Marvin Harrison out there, or some slow, some smojo out there. Uh yes, at times I I knew. I gave my best to some of the bigger name guys than I did with some of the, you know, just average players. Um, but excitement and, and, and it was always in me. I never thought it for once, oh, we can't stop this team or we got to find a way to know. Not, my, my thought process wasn't that, that way. Gotcha. Gotcha. And hey, JD, was there, was, there, was there ever a time offensively? I know you said you, 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 you always had the, uh, you always rooted for the defense and all that. But was there a time where you and Tony and you got you guys are boys, you know, you guys, oh man, here we go. Defense is to shit in the bed again or something like that. Were there any like games like they're like, come on, man, get a stop, please get one stop at least? Or was there ever kind of, I'm sure there was a time that, I mean, it did happen, right? We were like, but it was more like, all right, here we go. Like, let's, hey, let's get back in there, right? Let's go back in and go score. More so than like, oh man, look, ah, oh, shoot, look at him. Here we go. Here we go again. Right. Now, when that, it was like, oh, here we go. Another opportunity to go down and score. And I so, think, yeah. To touch on that, JD, I think when you when you have that mentality of like, oh, you know, defense. To me, that's that saying of you're looking at the glass half empty rather than half full. You know what right. I mean? Like, yes. if you're half yes. empty, if you're like, oh, defense is back out here, they're gonna give up some more points. But if you're looking right. at half full, you're like, hey, let's shoot, let's go out here and score again. You know? Right. I mean, that's you're right. thinking positive thoughts rather than letting the negative thoughts get in your mind. Yeah. So that's- I don't know what game it was, but Tony came down to address the defense because. They had you guys had gone out there and you scored on maybe like in two plays. Mm-hmm. And I guess some of the fans you could hear them. I mean, even on the side of them, you're like, oh, we scored too, we scored too fast. The defense has got to go back out there. <laughs> Tony TG was so crump. And he's like, man, fuck this. Like, I hear people talking about how bad you guys are and you can't stop and we scored too quick. I know you guys got it. I know you can do it. We practice against you guys daily. We know you got it in you. Right. Tony was sounding better than a D coordinator. Yeah. Right, Tony right. Don't talk, Tony didn't talk much. No, he didn't. Hey. Uh, he, he does. <laughs> but yeah, it's like at that moment, it's like, you know, we got we get more from our, our, our players than we do from our D coordinator to, to, to have us, you know, more motivated and, and to go out and, and to do these things and to, to make these stops than we, we would, you know, we got our tight end that's coming out there trying to motivate the squad. Yeah. So that's, that's a big, like, pat on the back to get you going, right? That's true. That's nothing. Not going down and excoriating you like, hey, you know, come on, y'all guys need to. Hey, look, <laughs> they talking bad about y'all. We know y'all not that bad. Forget all of that. You know, we got yeah. your back. That's and that's that's how we always thought about it. E. I'm I'm serious. It's, I mean, shoot, you know that. Shoot, oh, we, I know. Yeah, we we played with each other for shoot number of years, brother. So <laughs> too long. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one more question about defense before we go to the next uh, topic. This is something that I think Ian Eagle, uh, the play-by-play guy, uh, uh, called out on uh, Sunday, was that we're we're in a week that was week four, right? So week four, we're still having these communication issues where you know Chargers took advantage of it. They're getting on the ball. They know there's communication issues. They're getting on the ball going uh, uh, quick, and you kind of saw that a little bit. Eagles were, were doing some of that because they saw there was communication issues. Where does that come from, E? Like when you know. People aren't are lining up in the right position. Tyron Matthews had asked to tell somebody to go line up over here. Where, where, I mean, who's that come from? So the, the best thing I knew for me as a corner is when I have to play at the other end and our offense is on the other side of the field. 
I knew every single signal of what the defense was called. So I didn't have to go to the huddle to see what it was. I could just stay on my side. I can walk back and get rest if I needed to just walk back to my side of the field and, and catch the signal. But this is, a, this is the, the, the problem that I can see. If you got Chris moving from tight end to tackle to, you know, right end, tight end, or not tight end, but right end, left end to D tackle, and you need to make substitution of who's coming in or who's going to play where, where you want to play at Chris, where you want to, you know, where you most comfortable at right now, or uh, is a nickel package, you know, who's going to be where. That's the communication part. But as far as like the play calls, usually everybody knows what the signals are. Uh, so once that signal guy sends that signal in, you know what it is. This is just a matter of who's going to play where and, and, and how. And so that's my thing is like who's lining up where. Um, because when, if, even when the nickel comes in, we already know if it's a nickel in, there's probably three or more receivers in. Mm -hmm. If it's, uh, you know, uh, short yardage, you're going to take the nickel out, you're going to bring an extra lineman or, or, or take a, another DB out and add another tight end. So the personnel is going to play to itself. It's just a matter of getting guys in the right position of knowing where they're going to play at. Yeah. Yeah, they, I think the first touchdown, they, they was they was flipping defensive ends. You didn't even get over the other side. It was just like <laughs> completely just – I'm like, oh, my gosh, this, this can't yeah. happen. And I, and I told you the, the charge game, it was a wide receiver lined up. Nobody was on him. I'm like, I just – I'm like – So, the, yeah, that should never happen unless the dude just come from that sideline and just didn't go to the huddle. That's the only way I can see that happen because mm – -hmm. When you go out there, even as a nickelback, you know who you're guarding because the guy's already coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I, I don't understand that part. You know, uh, and offense is going to take advantage of that. Real quick, as soon as they see it, <laughs> things, you know, it's as soon as you see something like that, I mean, you come immediately. Yeah, exactly. And that's what the good offense is going to do. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You're exactly right. And, and that's something you'd be looking for, uh, Tyler? You, you, you'd be going yeah, out there? Yeah, I mean, especially an uncovered guy. I mean, you – I mean – you know, the coach is going to tell you right off the bat. I mean, you. I mean, is it, the more you play, the better. I mean, you know, as far as the offense, any offense, if you see guys out on defense or looking at one another, asking what the play is, where I line up, snap the dang ball because at that point, somebody's going to be out of place. You, you know, got the advantage, and it does happen often to where they're out of like the defense is, and next thing you know, the guy just gets missed blocked or whatever, ends up being in the right place at the right time on defense. But more often than not. If those guys are looking confused back there, you got to take advantage of that on offense. You know, I mean, it just – I mean, that's what it comes down to. I mean, offense really is – you've got 11 guys that really have to make, you know, a play on, on – all. everybody has to be firing on all cylinders on offense. But right. on defense, I mean, it all it takes is – all defense linemen could fall down or whatever, and the quarterback throws it. It just takes one DB to pick the ball off. You know what I mean? So. Sure. Yeah, I know at the end of the day, but it's still a team game because ultimately, you know, the D tackle, the DNs, they're, you know, in the run game, they're holding up the offensive linemen, allowing the linebackers to make plays. But it takes, I mean, it just, at the end of the day, it's one of those things to where it commun there's communication that that starts during the week, though. You shouldn't be having communications right. on Sunday, a communication issue right. on that's Sunday. Right. I mean, that's just, you're professionals for a reason. Mm -hmm. You need to be, and I'm not saying it's the coaching, and I'm not saying it's the player, but somewhere along the way, something's not getting relayed to the game because, you know, like Tom Brady's always said, you know, he goes, I love practice more than I do the games because that's where you iron everything out. So when you start to play the game, it's like, it's second nature to you. you yeah. Know I mean, and that's where it should be during the week. And not that those guys might be taking it for granted that, you know, they've gone um, for two years back to back Super Bowls, but a lot of times they just sit back and be like, Oh, we're supposed to win this game. But in reality, yeah. The people that are lining across the ball from you, they're trying to beat the dang, you know, defending Super Bowl champs. And now, the you know, back to back, I mean, they want to knock Kansas City off because they're one of the best teams in the league. I mean, they want to do that every week. So you're yeah. going to, as the best team, you know, the Patriots knew it all too well all those years. As one of the better teams, you're going to get everybody's best every single week. And Kansas City's getting that. Yeah. Yeah. So I say, so we everybody Super Bowl, you know. Absolutely. Exactly. Bragging rights. So, <clears throat> you know, a lot of that happens too, like with the with the defensive line to the whole. That's how a lot of the quarterbacks they see those big guys trying to run in and off the field, and they catch them trying to get off the field. You uh, they, with twelve men or more on the, on the field because they can't, they don't know when who's who they're who they're subbing for. You know, oh, yeah. the coach is like, John's get in there. Okay, who am I getting? You yeah, know, if I get him out, 
and he's not a part of the package. Now I got two guys running out or, or, you know, the wrong guy running out. You got too many on the field or not enough on the field. So yeah, that's usually what the D line is. And that's too, a lot of times, you know, with a three, four team, and when you go into a nickel package, you essentially come down, you know, a four down team instead of a three down team. So, you know, there's a lot of things that need to be ironed. Like I said, I mean, the communication comes to, you know, where's the strength of the defense that, you know, or the strength of the offense. All right. If it's, you know, strong, right, whatever, you know, the strength is obviously to the left, but it's to the right of defense. I mean, those are communications from the linebacker side of things that, you know, they got to be making the right calls to tell the defensive lineman that, you know, where to line up essentially. And, and I'm, you know, the take of offensive players is always for a defense. We always used to say defensive players are pretty much, you know, we try to say they're dumb, but obviously, you know, all they got to do is worry about getting the football. You know, at yeah. the end of the day, um, there's a lot more that goes into offense than it does defense. And not saying that, you know, you're not smart on defense or anything like that. But at the end of the day, it's one of those things to where, you know, you've got to have that leader on defense that's ultimately getting those guys lined up in the right spots. Um, but because at the end of the day, you got to get a guy lined up, but you also got to do your own job. I mean, that's true. So you're taking on more responsibility there, but – you know, and that the great linebackers over the years are the ones that, you know, can tell those people, you know, time in and time out, hey, you're here. And, you know, I still know what my responsibility is because I know I'm the leader of the defense. You know, because offense, you got to know as a quarterback, you got to know what, you know, the, what the blocking schemes are, what routes the receivers are running, what, you know, who's the back blocking, if he's going Mike to Sam. I mean, there's a lot that goes into play for offense, or, you know, as, from a quarterback standpoint, but there's a reason that, you know, the linebacker usually has that green dot on his helmet because he's the leader of the defense when making calls. Right. I always say, man, tight ends, we, we have, like, their, their second responsibility to, like, quarterbacks because we got to know it all. Same thing. Block the scheme. Absolutely. You know, routes, all of that. But it, it, it it's always funny seeing those big guys run off the field because you look, man, I'm like, I ain't seen this joker run that fast <laughs> when they play him. Yeah. <laughs> You just had another run scheme, though, Jay. You didn't really get the pass game. Hey, I was out there to pass now. I thought you gave me a couple little little uh, biscuits out there practice, you know. So. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'll cut my little fair share now. When they throw it to me, man, I'm going to eat. So. Yeah, that's exactly right. You catch them sleeping. They're like, no way you can catch the ball. Next thing you know. Hey, yeah. Oh, look at 89. What? He don't go you got them chicken legs. You're running. <laughs> So hopefully these guys get it ironed out for a week five against Buffalo. Um, okay, so our next concern. Um, so it's been a week since we signed Josh Gordon to our practice squad. But since then, as of yesterday, uh, I believe, uh, he's been elevated to our active roster. And all signs point to him playing on Sunday. So what are some real realistic expectations for Josh Gordon this Sunday? And how excited should fans be? And another part of that question, uh, Tyler, you played with uh, Josh Gordon in Cleveland in 2014. For fans who don't really know Josh Gordon as a teammate or as a person, kind of talk to us a little bit about Josh Gordon. Um, he's very quiet. Um, you know, when it comes to in the locker room, he kind of keeps to himself. And I think you can kind of see that, you know, from his off the field stuff that he's had dealing with. Um, but I mean, he's a great teammate. I mean, the guy's very not. He's very smart. You know, when I was in Cleveland, we were under uh, Kyle Shannon's offense, and I'm telling you right now, that was the verbiage was just unbelievable. Um, but you know, for him being that it's his first or second week there, they're going to have a package of plays, but at the end of the day, a guy like Josh Gordon, I mean, you see guys, uh, you know, week in and week out. I mean, the, the NFL is the best of the best. There's a reason that, you know, it's less than 1% of college athletes are going to the NFL. Um, but Josh Gordon, he's just, you know, and, and I know it's been six years since I played with him, but he just made it look so easy. And I played with great – I mean, Dwayne Bowe was a great receiver when I played there. You know, he was – you know, Tony Gonzalez was phenomenal. But just Josh, when he's out there, he just looks like a man amongst boys. I mean, it just – he's so smooth running. But I, I got a feeling Andy Reid is, is such a great coach. He and uh, Eric um, Bianaman, I think there's uh, EB or whatever, yeah. they will have a package for Josh that he probably won't start every single down – but they'll say, hey, you know, at the end of the day, when you've got Tyreek Hill on one side, Josh Gordon on the other, you got Travis Kelsey inside, I mean, you can't cover those guys. So, you know, as a quarterback, you see him doubling Tyreek, you know you got one-on-one -on -one with Josh. Well, if they're trying to double both of those guys, you know Travis Kelsey's probably matched up with a linebacker, and I promise you, you know, defenses don't want that. So to add another weapon to that offense, I mean, I just – 
the biggest thing, you know, or adding another weapon is really obviously is going to benefit, but I really, you know, the biggest thing that Patrick Mahomes and I think he'll do a good job is you can't force the ball, you know, take what the defense gives you and just move the ball down the field because you want to get a new guy like Josh Gordon, the ball and everything like that. But at the end of the day, you need to take what the defense gives you and continue to make plays and move the ball down the field. So, but adding a guy like, like I said to Josh, you know, I know he's a smart guy. He was very, um, he, he did really well at Cleveland. I just know he had obviously the off field and stuff that kind of screwed everything up. I really want to see the guy do well and get a chance to succeed because, you know, you want to see somebody bounce back after what all he's been through and actually have some success. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know a lot about him. I just know from watching him play. So uh, and he hasn't played in a while. And I know we just spoke about it last week. Uh, so, so my, my, my opinion is kind of the same. It's like, I mean, I'm excited for him. I know he's got a chip on his shoulder, probably both shoulders. Uh, he's ready for action. And I know he, he's, 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 he's got to be excited to be playing within the offense that gives him, you know, the, the opportunities that, that probably no other offense has, has given him, uh, especially having Kelsey and Tariq out there and, uh, you know, a guy like Patrick, you know, distributing the ball the way he has been. So absolutely, it has to be something exciting for him. Uh, plus to have a chip on his shoulder to go out there. I don't know how many plays he's going to get in. Uh, if anything, right now, just like, you know, what Tyler said, I think they're going to have a small package uh, for him for the game. Just like we have, we got Le'Veon. You know, Le'Veon came in last year. Um, and I think teams automatically knew that when he came in, we were going to try to force feed him at the time. And we did. But it was kind of a distraction until when it came to calling his number, he was available. And it'll be the same thing for, for, for Josh, so. That's it. When he's, well, yeah, and that's one thing. When Josh steps on the field, I can promise you that D coordinator already said, we need to know where number 19 is, you know, because he 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 commands that attention when he's on the field. I mean, there's no question. But it's hard to give <laughs> a guy gonna like take, that. He ain't going to take the spotlight off of Tariq Hill. Exactly. I'm saying it's hard to give that guy attention when you got somebody on the other side. Yeah. Oh, oh, listen, listen. Hey, this guy, okay, is going to elevate the offense, no doubt about it, right? Like you said, he commands that. And so when you're talking about those – the balls in the, in, in the end zone and jump balls and getting the ball up to him. I listen to how the, the players are just talking about him. Like Travis Custer just talking about how freakishly athletic he is. He really and, is. You know, the things like he said, it makes look effortless running out of the, the break. And he Travis said, like, I had never seen a guy like this, you know? So I just, I, I, watching him in the past, the things he was able to do, like Tyler played with him. Like you said, he, he, he makes it look effortless. When you have a guy like that, and now what teams are starting to do, they start to the kind of game plan because we're so creative what we do with the motion and, you know, moving guys, get guys up. With Josh, now you can just line up and just play. Sometimes you'll have to do all the motion and, and, and trickery to try to, you know, you know, outthink the defense. Sometimes it's like, I'm going to line this Joe up against your Joe, and my Joe's going to win. Bottom line. Yeah, but a lot of that has to happen, though, Jay. You know, the motion is basically to tell you if we're a zoner, man. I, I know. Look, and, I, I, yeah, no, yeah, I, I understand that. I understand that part of it. But I'm talking about now, like, like you know, the point y'all was making. You got Josh, Tyreek, uh, Kelsey, CEH, now, and Hartman. Kind of, look, what are you going to do? You had a hard time already to begin with. Now you just make it even tougher. And so we're talking about just this guy, right? And I don't care if he's just a, a, a shadow of his former self. And I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't hear players talk about Le'Veon like that. I didn't, when, when Le'Veon came to Kansas City, I didn't hear people talk about Le'Veon like, oh, he's back. This is a Le'Veon of old. But when they talking about Josh Gordon now, they was like, look, this guy came into shape. He looks great. He's running routes. He's getting open. This is what I want to hear. I want to hear from players' perspective about how he is. Right? We can speculate, but they, they practice him with him. And so – I don't care. Like, if they give him 20 plays, in 20 plays, you guarantee the defensive coordinator is coming in and that sucker's flipping through his pages like, uh oh. <laughs> yeah. What are we going to do about this guy? Yeah. This guy coming out. We got to no. know. Don't forget about him. Hey. My, my thing is, I think that they're going to line up. I don't care who their corner is. They're going to say man to man to Josh. Oh, it's a mistake. No, yeah. please do. Please. Jamie, hey. you don't know what you have right now. Please. The best thing you can do I don't care. Please. Please. No, but you can't. Your, your main concern when you go against Kansas City is to stop Tariq Hill or Travis Kelsey. For the most part, whoever my other corner is, 
you go line up man to man until he proves to me that he's the same Josh Gordon. Please if he do. can prove to me he's you Josh Gordon of old. Hey, yes. you're gonna find out real quick. Please, but, man okay, man. Then, but we don't know this though. Huh? What's that? We don't know this. We're gonna find out. He, I, look, I, I guess are you down? Oh, look, you can doubt him all you want to. I tell you what, line up. Man I'm not doubting him. I'm just saying we don't know. I want to see it. I want to see it. The guys that are proven on this offense are Tariq and Kelsey. I I I get no that. We, we, we all know that. We all know that. We all know that. Line up on nineteen, man to man. I want to see it, please. That sucker gonna take you. That, look, you are gonna give that, that DB a complex. You might get him cut. Sure, it might look. Hey, coach, please don't leave me over here by myself on this guy. <laughs> hey, I need some help. I need some help. <laughs> Somebody. You know, and I, I love your excitement, though, Jay, I do love your excitement. And one thing it might be, it might say, like Eric said, you know, you might line up one on one and say, "Hey, you know what? This guy, he ain't played in X amount of years. Let's put him one on one. Let's still do our thing on doubling Tyreek and trying to, you know, help with Travis Kelsey and say, hey, if he starts to beat us, then we might have to say, all right, now we got our jobs. But exactly. So, but I still say that Please. in the sense that I can promise you the guy that's on. Uh, Josh Gordon, I can promise you that he's going to be like, oh, shoot, I'm guarding, I'm guarding Josh Gordon now. <laughs> but, I, but I don't know that, though, Tyler. Because, like, I, as I as I described it last week, when Randy Moss came into his last few years, every single person that's on an opposing team knows, knows who Randy Moss is. You don't want to go one-on-one with Randy. Yeah. I but when it. Randy got to San Fran, we don't know what type of Randy we got. Yeah. And when, Randy got to know, when Randy got to New England, we didn't know what kind of Randy we had. You think you think, guys, you think guys were still shaking in their boots? That's what I'm just saying. That's what I'm until saying. Until Randy, until Randy, had, until Randy shows you, I'm still the same Randy Moss. I can make these plays. That's I get, who I am. Yeah. I get that. I, hey, I'm, not, I'm not discrediting Josh. Josh has proven everything that he is. I just want to see it now because the guy's been out of the game. He can come and look like the same old guy. I, know, I, I, need, I want to see it. Right. I, I want to see it, too. And I'm just saying, please give me one on one because I want to see that, too. I guarantee if I was on the sideline, I hear knees shaking and 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 and, and, and bucking, you know, just shaking. I'm like, like oh, 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 yeah, he's here. That's right. 19 showing up. You got to cover him now. And so sometimes, man, it's just it's the nostalgia of just knowing a guy. Right. It's the reputation of knowing what a guy is. And look, I get guys lining up, but without a doubt. You know what he's done. You know who he is. And if you hear, which they are, everybody's getting reports out of Kansas City what Josh Gordon looks like. They know on it. So, uh, yeah. so uh, to me, myself, do you think I, I'm a fan. I grew up a fan of Jerry Rice. Okay. Bug-eyed kid when I had to line up man-to-man -man against him. Yeah. First play of the game, picked off, me to the crib. Mm -hmm. I didn't give a damn about what Jerry Rice did in the past. Man, your toes got to prove to me. Your toes was crossed. You was hoping that you you had your toes crossed in your. <laughs> but who made the play? You did. Okay, hey, so right, you know right. What I'm saying, Jerry had to prove to me you're still the same Jerry Rice. I understand I what you no, bring no, to the table. What kind of stats you got? Right now, I get it. I get it. I understand. I was man that, to that's... man, mano right. a mano. Boy, you had a you and had a the same thing. Josh is going to get man to man to say, hey. We don't know what kind of Josh Gordon we got. Looks good. It's fucking phenomenal. Guy's muscular, big, but we don't know what we got. And so go man to man. We know who we got to stop. That's 10 and 87. Listen, if, if you see a guy take his helmet off, he's got a lucky rabbit's foot on the uh, shoe because he's like Josh Gordon, you know what it is. Right? <laughs> so that's I what I want to see. I want to see it. I do too. I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see it. So I'm rooting for him. I know you are too. I'm, I'm just saying, I, you know, I want Josh to do well. I think he's going to, you know, come in here, man. He's just going to elevate the offense uh, just with his presence. And then if he's just making plays, which I'm sure he's he's going to, uh, it's going to bode well even just for the team. And so that, I think that's another thing that helps take away from some of the pressure maybe on the defense, right? Just knowing that you got another guy. I'm just look. the offense is gonna score no matter what. We already know that they're gonna score, defense. but but we, we <laughs> look, we've had problems, but the first you know three weeks of the game, you know, it that's was why fun. he said that we needed the humble pie. Humble said, pie, but you know, we we talked about we talked about you know also too, you know, the guys is you know that that's in the room. We was wondering about them and you know, kind of getting to 
Now you got a guy who, who's coming in, who's a proven guy that can make his plays. We were just talking about, you know, taking those 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 catches that Sammy had when he was here. So, you know, now he's here. Tyler, what, what were you what were you gonna say, Tyler? No, no, I was just saying, like, I could reiter- just to reiterate, you know, I know Patrick, you know, hearing guys talk about, you know, Josh and how smooth he is. I mean, like I said, the, the guy watching the guy, you know, that year in Cleveland, I mean, it's just, he was a, like, he was just a specimen when, he, I mean, making one handed catches, like, just, I mean, it was just unbelievable watching him out there. And he was, so, I mean, he's 6'5, probably mm-hmm. 235, 240, he's solid, big boy. Rock, chiseled up. But to see him run as smooth as he did, like, that, you know, when you watch Tyreek Hill, you know, five, six with heels on or whatever, but, he, you know, that guy can move and he's smooth running and all that stuff. But, like, to be 6'5", 240 and running like that, he's definitely different. But I will say that to, to bring it back to the Josh thing is, like, the biggest thing I'll say is don't get caught. Yes, Josh Gordon's a great athlete, but don't get caught up as the OC of trying to just force the ball to him. You know, that's yeah. where I come back to saying Patrick truly needs to get out there just because he calls a play to get the ball to Josh doesn't mean you have to throw it. Take right. what the defense gives you because if you get caught up in trying to force it to him because he's now, you know, back on the field and like, you know, the quarterback's trying to force the ball to Randy Moss, not knowing if that was the true, you know, the same Randy Moss that, uh, you know, broke all those records with New England and the same one that was in Minnesota. You know, at the end of the day, you've got to get a feel with it. Just because he's doing good in practice doesn't mean he's going to do great in the game. So, oh, I agree. And I'm ex- like I said, I'm excited for him 100. percent I Absolutely. want him to be successful. I want him to do. I want him to do well for himself as Absolutely. much as he does for the Chiefs. Certainly. I, and, I, and I think what it what it does, kind of talking about that with with Patrick, you know, like maybe when he's scrambling and stuff like that, where he may have to just get a ball up to somebody, right? Yeah. And I'm looking at just you know the matchup. Well, I, I could take a chance on this guy, right? Oh, absolutely. So. And he's smart enough. Patrick's, I mean, yeah, yeah. You know, I don't have no problem. I mean, yeah, he's, yeah, he's unbelievable the way he's, you know, show. I mean, when he first, when they got rid of, when they, you know, more or less got rid of Alex Smith, I was like, how, oh, what are they doing? Cause they, you know, doing well. But then you can see a guy like Patrick, to me, really hadn't proven himself. But obviously they knew something within the organization. Cause look at him now. I mean, so I was very impressed with what Patrick's done over the, the past couple of yeah. years for sure. Do you have any uh, specific stories you kind of talked about watching Josh Gordon? He was like this human specimen. Any like specific stories stand out at practice? Like, he, and like, because I've heard stories about Larry Fitzgerald in practice, how he had one hand catches galore. Um, I don't know if there's any cool Josh Gordon stories you had. I mean, just watching him run. I mean, it just, like I said, he doesn't look like he's running fast, but I mean, he's every stride's five yards. I mean, it's, you know, it's unbelievable. Like I said, I mean, just the one handed catches, it's like he just would like, Anybody would obviously catch it with two hands. He just kind of catches it and just tucks the ball like he never even – essentially it's like he caught it with two and tucked it, but he's like catching one and just tucking it. He's like, what are you – I mean, <laughs> he's just he's just different. And when Travis Kelsey says the things that he says, like when he's watching, he's saying those things for a reason. Right. But he's still got to transition that over to, you know, on the field. Would you say uh, 55 yards over or under? Would you, uh, would you go with? I want to go over, but I just, like I said, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know how much they're going to try to get him in. So, you know, that's the biggest thing. They may have to where he comes in, you know, 10 plays. Do I think they're going to throw at him every time? No, I don't, because you got so many weapons on that offense. You, right. You're going to still – Patrick's done a phenomenal job of spreading the ball out to everybody on that year in and year out, or week in and week out. Yeah, I'm going to say under, too, because anything I, – I, I, Anything over, I think we're trying to force him into into game shape. We're trying to force him into the playbook. Uh, so I think this first game is just something to get you know get his feet up underneath him, get his win back, get a feel of the game. You know, it, it, it's a great game to be you know to start it out with because it's one of the better teams in the league uh, with a good defense. So uh, I just don't think we need to force anything. Now, if he does, it's going to be something like what uh, Deshaun Jackson had. He's going to have some big breakaway play that. You know, that, that he scores off of, but for the most part, I think it'd be under 55 too. Yeah, I mean, shoot, 55, man, that's a good chunk. Um, yeah, just you know, second week coming back, just being reinstated, 55. Ooh. Now, yeah. that third week, next week, we got them. Hey, yeah, <laughs> I can see that, but right now, working man, just see what he can do. 
I, I want to say over too, just because I, I think we're all excited here. I, I, I want to see him get, you know, get a big bomb or something. That'd be amazing. All right, so we're going to go to last concern of the night, our game predictions. Uh, e was almost spot on last week with his prediction. He was almost spot on. I think we scored one more time, and, and that kind of washed it away. Yeah, messed it up. <laughs> but um, So this Sunday, the Buffalo Bills will be traveling to Kansas City in a rematch of last year's AFC Championship game uh, for Sunday Night Football. We uh, always love hearing Al Michaels. Uh, and this is also the Tyler Thick Pin Bowl, Buffalo and Kansas City, both teams he played for. Uh, but Chiefs are currently a two-and-a-half-point favorite at home against the Buffalo Bills. I read this morning uh, 62% of public money is on Buffalo in this one. Um, that's so far. Uh, but what are your score predictions and who do, who do you guys have in uh, this game on Sunday? 28-25 Chiefs. Mm. I'm, I'm, you want to go, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Um, I'm thinking 38-35. Uh, I'm going to go with the Chiefs on this one. Because mm. both of them got, you know, high-powered offenses. I mean, Buffalo's going to score points. You know, they, they've done that for the most part uh, over the past couple of years. Um, I definitely um, want to see the Chiefs pull it out, but I think 38-35 Chiefs. So I'm, I'm going to go 35-31 uh, Chiefs, 35-31. Close games. I didn't even go 30 again. That means we held them to a field goal. So defense yeah. did the job. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I was going to go 28, but I, I'm going to go 30. Yeah, we'll see. we we'll go 30, 35, 31. Right, so I just think that this game will be, we'll have some stops. We'll, defensively, we'll have, we'll have some stops. Yeah. The magnitude of the game is, you know, it, it's, it's too big right now because, for one, you know, we're right now, uh, we're behind. We're behind the eight ball. So we got to do something to 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 to, to, to get back um, in the mix of things. You know, we're, we're last in the conference. So, you know, we got we got we got a point to prove. You know, I know. I mean, yeah, it's a it's a blow off, but you know, still to be concerned when we don't know how many games that Chargers are going to keep winning or the Raiders going to keep winning. We got to control our own destiny. So, right, but we got to see the Chargers again. We still hadn't had to, uh, what's that, Vegas? We you know knock them off. So, I don't know, man. I, I, <laughs> I don't know, man. Chargers, but we're a better team, no doubt about it. But I I, th- I just think. You know, they're kind of lucking out a little bit, too. I'm, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. So, I think at the end of the day, we're we, we going we gonna to be the ones on top of that. How big of a hole is it if we do, let, let's say, knock on wood, let's say we do lose to two and three, how big of a hole is that to, to climb out of? I mean, it's early in the season, but how big is that? Tyler, how big would that be? I mean, that's tough because I think you start you, – you, you almost start, you know, you start pointing fingers at one another, and that's the last thing as teammates you want to do um, because – you know, whether it be the offense, you know, expecting defense or defense expecting the offense to bail them out. You know, at the end of the day, it's always tough. Is it impossible? No, because you know what they've done uh, and what they're capable of doing. It just finally – it's going to take all three phases of the game to, you know, to get on the same page. I mean, you know, what they're doing right now, the way they're playing, is that a Super Bowl caliber team? No, it's not. But, you know, it's only week four. There's no reason to, to throw in the towel now. I mean, there's a lot of football left to be played. Um, and you know what they're capable of, and I definitely think that uh, they are capable of doing it. Yeah, I agree. And three of the teams we play are playoff teams. Out of five. I mean, come on now. Shoot, and this, and- could be, this could be the game that, you know, it could – I wouldn't say make or break, but you come out and make a statement against Buffalo – I mean, obviously the media is going to be right, the media. Right. They're going to be like jump back on board, mm-hmm. and they're ready. Last week they're ready to write them off. Yeah. Um, and then now, of course, they win a game. And they're like, oh, okay, Chiefs are back. You know, I mean, that's just the media being the media. Um, but this could be a, a statement game for everybody in the organization, not only from a media uh, three and two standpoint of a record, but truly saying, hey, you know, we're back to where we need to be. We're the Chiefs. We know who we are. We don't right. need to show anybody else. We know who we are. So yeah, yeah. So that's why I like the twenty-eight, twenty-five. Because if, if they if they score more than thirty, it's going to go right back to the same you know comments to where our offense can't stop anything because they're giving up thirty plus points. And so yeah. if they're able to keep if they're able to keep able to keep Buffalo under thirty, I think it takes a little more of the heat off of them than what it, than what they've been taking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. 
Yeah. Well, and last time we played Buffalo uh, in regular season was coming off the Raiders loss at home last year. We went to Buffalo and we won that game. And said the CEH had like 130 yards that game. Um, so, you know, I, I think that was a tougher circumstance. Yeah, I think we had more yards rushing. Yeah, we did. Wow. <laughs> Nuts. He's cooking right now too, man. He's cooking. Shoot. Keep it up. Keep it up. He's solid, man. Any, any, any OC, if they can run the ball. They yeah. want to run the ball. Yeah, know? absolutely. Because they look pretty throwing passes and all that. Yeah, but if you can control the clock and keep moving those chains, I mm -hmm. promise you, EB being a running back guy, I promise you he wants to be feeding the ball. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, so there's no question about that. If you can do it and you can run the ball, I mean, why wouldn't you do it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Definitely. And we, we found our two-headed monster with Daryl Williams being the, the, the short yards goal line guy. And uh, CH being our uh, pretty much our three down back up until the red zone. So, got to love what we're seeing from all phases of the game. Um, sure. All right, guys, that does it for us. Thanks for tuning in to Chief Concerns presented by Bet Online. Tyler, thanks a lot for coming on, man. It was, it was a true yeah, honor. Man, appreciate, you coming on. Yeah. appreciate it, man. Thank you, guys. I enjoyed it. Yeah, well, get out of here. You got to take me out to a nice golf course. Hey, man, absolutely. Come on down. Where you at? Thanks. Where you at, man? Where are you uh, at? I'm up in uh, Columbia, South. I mean, we're in Chapin, South Carolina. Okay. So, you know, in the Carolinas. So, All right. Okay. Sorry, getting away from here, man. I played in Kansas City, Miami, Buffalo. I mean, this whole always going to be home in the Carolinas. I hear you, man. It's beautiful. It's beautiful country down there, anyway, though. You know, oh, yeah, it definitely is. Mm -hmm. and how close is that to Myrtle Beach? Uh, we're about two and a half hours from Myrtle. So, okay. I, you know, I lived in Myrtle, obviously, when I obviously played coastal. Lived there after uh, ball. Thought I was gonna meet my wife and kids down there. Met my wife, and she was from the Columbia area. And we talked about having kids right away, and knew we would have help up here. But so that's pretty much what brought me to this area. But I'm about 30 minutes from my hometown, so okay. Um, but it's nice to be back in this area. I've enjoyed it. Awesome, man. Well, it, awesome, man. You're, you're welcome to come on the show anytime, man. Was it really? Yeah, keep me posted, man. I definitely. You'll have a subscriber in me, man. I, I'm definitely looking forward to you guys keeping up with you guys. I enjoyed. Uh, it's always fun, you know, when you get caught up in the whole parent, you know, and, and work and everything, you really, it, it's hard to find time for the, you know, watching sports or, um, you know, obviously talking football. You don't get to talk. When you got two girls, you're not talking much football. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's nice to actually do that. So I've enjoyed it. Thank you guys for having me. Sounds good, man. Again, it was a pleasure.